the fastest AI. How do we benchmark the AIs and their performance and speed? Well, it turns out human conversations have, you know, a general cadence. Hi, typically I say something to you about 200 milliseconds later, which is pretty fast. You respond, and then we talk back and forth like that. It's about 200 milliseconds. That's pretty quick. And so the way we benchmark AI could be based on human conversation. Can it respond as quickly as humans can? Now, the fastest AI, uh, the fastest .ai website has a benchmark of all the various API service providers and the models that they are offering. And they do this around the clock. They do measurements over and over across all the providers and different models that the providers offer. So that way we can see the most beneficial and the fastest. I like how they did their, their logo here. You can see it's made out of uh, all these little um, sort of ASCII characters that are well, probably in the Unicode space. Uh, it's kind of a neat way to do a logo on a website. <laughs> it's kind of neat. If we're benchmarking AIs like the large language models, a good way to do it is just to see how fast they respond. The faster they respond, the quicker we can get results. Also, if the model is very big, but it responds quickly, that means the business, whoever's behind it is doing something pretty cool to make that model a lot faster is pretty challenging. There's a lot of ways to do it. Now let's take a look at the fastest.ai. It's a website that continuously benchmarks the varieties of API providers like grok.com together.ai, fireworks.ai. Um, they also say what model is being tested at the time and they provide varieties of ways of, you know, based on time, how fast the model responds. We can see time to first token, right? So that's gonna be usually the first word that shows up on the screen, how fast can that occur? Number of tokens per second, which uh, could, you know, be increased. Like say if the, the model returns like four or five tokens at, in one go, that could uh, improve the overall tokens per second. Uh, and the, the total time it takes to get uh, a full response, for example. So the fastest.ai gives us the, the, the winner right here at the top, right? So grok.com, which I was confused because I was like, isn't, you know, Twitter slash X, doesn't that have a grok? Well, it does have a grok. It's just a different grok with a K instead of a Q. And I think it's interesting, grok.com shows up here at the top for Mixtral. And a couple of other I saw um, in previous days, they showed up higher, but they are number one here for a pretty, a pretty big model, pretty decent model. They are an independent entity. It's a, they say that they're on a mission to uh, improve the inference speed to help uh, AIs you know, overall come to life, right? We get them to make those uh, AIs a lot faster and they do that through, they've got a, a custom engine here, which probably does, uh, eliminates a lot of the wait times that occur between token generation, embedding, and the various layers that need to, uh, you know, be passed through, right? Some of these models, they have a lot of layers. So in order to get an uh, actual token output, what they can do is they can split every layer across a dedicated GPU, uh, and then that will, you know, allow them to have higher concurrency, but also serve AI overall a lot more quickly. There's also a couple other items in here, such as US region and uh, uh, there's Europe region in Paris and a couple of US regions. And Grok does show up here near the top three under all the scenarios. So we could say grok.com actually shows up faster than all the others. These are the smaller models. Don't, don't me wrong. They are, you know, the smaller models versus like the larger 70 billion model. Well, it does say eight by seven though. So these are pretty beefy as is. So it is eight times seven. But during inference, it only uses two of those. So really this is only the 14 billion models. And I bet you as we scroll down, we're gonna see, ah, yep, all right. So the bigger models, the 70 billion parameter models and the eight by 22, these are gonna take longer, they take more compute. So they will show up lower on the screen. So we can see overall the winner is grok.com together AI fireworks, perplexity, more fireworks, more perplexity. All right, so we've got some, uh, some a lot of interesting options here. How do we benchmark large language models? Well, there's actually a pretty easy approach if you take it into account just how fast they respond and in the various uh, aspects of their response times, including time to first token, which is TTFT, time to first token, that tells you how quickly the model can process the incoming request and begin the text output. This is the beginning, right? So essentially the first token, the first word that comes back. The other option here is tokens per, spec uh, per second. This is uh, how, uh, how quickly the model can produce text and controls how quickly the full response shows up in the UI. And then you have the end-to-end -to -end total time from the start of the request until the response completes. 
So the AI could have more concise responses, giving you more accurate outputs, which might be shorter, but at the same time, they also have a higher uh, token per second. And so you combine all those together and you're gonna get the best model in terms of its performance. Often you'll see mostly this is related to the size of the model, right? Is it gonna be 70 billion parameters? 70 billion parameters or 200 billion, it can just keep going up from there. And so total time in this case, uh, time to first token plus tokens per second times tokens total. Uh, this gives you the best performance. And we see that the fastest AI is doing this for all the various providers that offer an API. And they do this in a distributed footprint across uh, fly.io. They currently have a, it looks like Paris, Virginia and Seattle data centers. Uh, they do a connection warm up, which is nice. So they establish the TCP or TLS connection first before they actually send the request and they disregard that in terms of accounting for latency. That's kind of a nice, uh, it keeps things nice and fair. Uh, and then we also have a uh, measurement TTFT clock starts when the HP request is made. That means, you know, the connection's already warmed up. And then as soon as we, you know, transmit those ethernet frames, we're going to start the clock for making that request. And then uh, they also cap the max tokens to 20. So it creates a uniform response between all because the models are all going to respond with a variety of tokens. So it's nice that they do this uh, because you know, a lot of the models are going to respond with a different number of tokens. And of course, for every single test that they run, they want to include uh, an additional two, two tests and they keep the best one. It looks like they try three, they keep one from each of the providers and that removes any of the outliers due to queuing uh, because you know, other people are using the API at the same time yeah. that helps eliminate. It doesn't completely eliminate it, but it reduces it. So we were just looking at the fastest AI, which is a website that benchmarks large language models using, you know, time to first token, tokens per second, and a total time taken to respond. Those are really good ways to benchmark models and the API's performance. This is all provided to us by Fixie, which is a real-time artificial intelligence. They're building AIs that can communicate as naturally as humans can. And that level of communication is pretty, I think that's meaningful because we need to communicate it as humans. And as we do, the more natural an AI communication, you know, back and forth is, uh, the better the experience, right? And so that's something even at PubNub, we like real time as well, right? We wanna be able to exchange data as quickly as possible. That signal, as soon as it's emitted, needs to be received as quickly as possible. At the other end, PubNub is an edge messaging network and you can um, send signals. And a lot of things can be like chat messages, just like communication. Uh, and we that's why I'm mentioning is because real time is something that we believe in as well. Uh, and this is, you know, Fixie's description, human, uh, human communication is messy. Uh, and it is uh, often that we interrupt and talk over each other, but uh, and we just don't always wait our turn. Oh, they mentioned the word artificial general intelligence will require models that can operate in the fastest pace, uh, you know, ambiguous world of natural human communication. That makes a lot of sense uh, it, once we get to an AGI or we start approaching more towards artificial general intelligence, this level of communication cadence uh, is gonna be absolutely necessary, right? Uh, actually, you really, you can't have claim to have reached AGI until you can compare with a human. That's what AGI is, is you, the, the AI itself can fully replace a human, including in conversation and the speed and performance of that conversation. So that is an, a mandatory checkbox item that's required. And I do like how Fixie is describing that that is a big part of their mission statement.